Okay, so today we'll talk about the integral test, which is a good topic for right before um, test two on Tuesday, because the integral test is pretty brief and self-contained. Um, it's the first of several convergence tests that we'll do. I suppose technically the second, because we addressed the quest, because we've um, also seen the nth term test, or maybe technically the third, because we talked about whether um, geometric series converge or not. But a convergence test is a test that tries to ask, tries to answer the question, does a given series converge? Um, notice the question we don't have written on the board, and that's to what? Um, in the applications of convergence that we'll be using, we'll know sort of what the series converges to in a general way. But um, asking sort of as a general question, what does a convergent series converge to is incredibly difficult and beyond the scope of this course. So we'll just ask, does a series converge? And I said it out loud. But the test we'll look at today to answer that question is called the integral test. And the integral test is pretty specialized, but it's going to let us look at a few very important series. So it does have some pretty major applications. So let's say we have a series that's defined in terms of a function. And this is how we're going to define series from now on in this class. We're just going to say, well, here's a formula for the nth term of the series. The integral test says, well, it has a few conditions, I guess we should mention. Um, It requires these A's to not be negative. And if I'm remembering correctly, it requires these terms to be decreasing. And this is a very, um, this is actually a very weak condition. It might seem like a strong one, but remember that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is anything other than zero, the series diverges. So if we're going to be using the integral test, these terms ought to go to zero. If they don't go to zero, we already know the answer. We already know the series diverges. 
And the easiest way for a series to go to zero is if each term in the series is smaller than the one that came before it. So it's actually extremely natural that we should have this condition. The integral test says that this sum converges if and only if this integral converges. And you can mess around with that lower, um, lower value. Like you could have the sum from 10 to infinity converges if and only if the integral from 10 to infinity converges. I just put one, you know, because I had to put something there. I've called this test extremely specialized. Um, it might not seem that way. It's extremely specialized because most of the actual important real world sums that we're going to look at are going to have, I mean, they're going to look something like this. We have negative numbers raised to powers, and then we have factorials. And if we have a negative number raised to a power, we can't use the integral test because of that condition. And if we have factorials, we can't use the integral test because we don't know how to integrate the factorial. So it's, um, when I call it specialized, the reason I use that word is that most of the series we care about are not, um, I'm blanking on the English here, they can't be dealt with using the integral test. But there are a few very important cases where the integral test works just fine. And the, the best known case, it's so important that it gets its own name, is called the harmonic series. Um, so called because it shows up in applications involving music. And the harmonic series is the sum from one to infinity of one over n. That is, it's one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth, and so on. All of the numbers of this form added together. And the harmonic series um, is not geometric, and the nth term test doesn't tell us anything. Remember that if the terms go to zero, the series might still diverge. The nth term test doesn't tell you anything in this case. The integral test, however, comes through for us. This is something we can integrate. Um, for those of you following along on um, like online students, 
I write this a little different than the textbook does. The textbook doesn't want to use n as a variable because n is often used as a constant, but I don't mind using n as a variable because, I mean, that's precisely what that d is there for. It's to tell your reader what's a variable and what's a constant. And here, n is a variable. Let's do, say capital N goes to infinity of the integral from one to capital N of um, of one over n, lowercase n, dn, maybe capital N was kind of an unfortunate choice just for talking about this, but we uh, end up with the limit as n goes to infinity, the natural log of capital N minus the natural log of one and as N goes to infinity um, the natural log goes to infinity it goes to infinity quite slowly but it does diver And the harmonic series also diverges. And if nothing else, the harmonic series is an excellent answer to the question, well, with the rise of technology, why do we have to do this? Why can't we just go to a computer and calculate a bunch of really big partial sums and see what happens. Because the harmonic series is going to infinity, but it's going to infinity extremely slowly. Like the sum from one to a thousand of one over n is about what the heck is this? Oh, it's giving it as a fraction. That's funny. But this is what I was looking for. So the one thousandth partial sum is seven point something. The one millionth partial sum is 14 point something. The billionth partial sum is 21 point something. The, let me see, is trailing next? The trailing partial sum is about 28. The whatever the heck this number is, partial sum is still less than a hundred. It's still less than ninety three. So I mean, you could maybe look at this and say, well, I keep adding zeros, and this keeps going up. So maybe it is just going to infinity, but I mean, it's hard to be totally confident when we add this many terms together and we're still sitting at 146. So the partial sum um, converges very slowly, but diverges very slowly, I meant to say but it does diverge, it is going to infinity.
we can look at, I mean, as far as important applications of the, um, of the integral test, it's the harmonic series and a few minor variations on the harmonic series, or maybe minor isn't the right word. They're important in their own right. We can look at the P series. And a P series is a sum from N equals something, I'll just say one to infinity of one over N to the P, where P is a constant, P is I should say a positive constant. So for example, the sum from one to infinity of the square root of n. This is a p-series because the square root is the one-half power. And p-series can be approached using the integral test. Um, that said, p-series are the kind of things you approach using the integral test only once in the real world, because we're going to just figure out whether they converge or diverge, and then we won't need them anymore. And let's, since this was the example I wrote down, let's make this the example that I look at. The sum from one to infinity, one over n to the one half converges if and only if the integral from one to infinity of one over n to the one half dn. Converges. And that's using capital N last time was kind of a pain. So let's use capital M. And let's go ahead and rewrite this as well. N to the negative, um, N to the negative one half. And this goes to infinity. Let's see. So we were saying that that this diverges. Um so I mean I say it converges if and only if the integral converges. And you know, the, the immediate corollary to that is that it diverges if and only if the integral would diverges. So this sum diverges 
Um, as a matter of fact, you can see that if we have the sum from something to infinity of one over n to the p, and p is stuck between zero and one, this is going to diverge. And the sort of the general argument here Um, is that when you take the antiderivative of this, it's the antiderivative of one over n to the p, that's the antiderivative of n to the negative p, and you add one to this, if P is between zero and one. This is going to be a positive, like negative one third plus one, negative one fifth plus one, negative two thirds plus one. If the power P is in that interval, this is positive. And then, I mean, this is a very sloppy way of writing it. But you ask what happens as that goes to infinity and infinity raised to a positive number is infinity. Yeah. And we can put here, we can put a less than or equal to sign because well, because we've seen that the harmonic series diverges. On the other hand, if this power is greater than one, This series converges. Let's, let's look at a concrete example. One over n squared. The integral test says that this converges if and only if the integral from one to infinity converges. And I hope that these integrals, I mean, Integrals can be tricky, they can be straightforward, they can be anything in between. But I hope that the, um, n raised to the negative two is a pretty straightforward integral by now. So negative two bumps up to negative one. We divide by that. We integrate from one to n. We get the limit as m goes to infinity of negative, sorry, so used to capital Ns that I, that I ended up making typos. That's that M be that variable. 
So we stick M in there. We stick one in there. This minus a minus is plus. And then again, sloppy notation, but you can think of one divided by infinity as being zero, and this limit is one. It's finite. So this converges it does not converge specifically to one. The integral test can be deceptive because you wind up with a number, but the number the integral test gives you is not the sum of the series. The relevant fact here is that we ended up with a finite number, so the integral converges, so the series converges. So if we go back to Wolfram Alpha, let's reduce the number of zeros so that we can actually see what we have here. But even if we make quite a small increase, even if we just have like one over n to the power of 1.0001, this is now changing from a divergent harmonic series to a convergent P series. If we add a bunch of zeros, so going back to what I said earlier, that it's really hard to just use um, Wolfram Alpha and ask yourself, well, are the finite sums going to something or what? Um, this series converges. This absolutely enormous partial sum has only reached 130.97. Compare that to 1 over n, which diverges, it's reached 131.8. So if you just look at these numbers, even when we go to this huge number, well, you really can't tell. So we do we do need integral tests. Um, the the technology idea of well, just let's just look at partial sums isn't really giving us a satisfactory answer in this case. And for our purposes, for the purposes of this class, um, this is really the take-home message of the, of the integral test, is these P series. I mean, you should be able to use the integral test if called upon, of course. But as we discuss, well, I guess I erased that discussion. But as we discussed earlier, it's really quite specialized. And I mean, we, we spent like half a semester taking integrals. We know that it isn't an easy thing to do. 
Whoop. I guess that's another issue with the integral test that um that even if it would work in theory, you have to be able to actually take the integrals. Um, but it gets us the harmonic series and it gets us the P series. And these are results you should know. Uh, with the P series, all I really have to say is that it's very important not to con um, not to conflate, not to confuse P series and geometric series because it's extremely easy to do when you're seeing this stuff for the first time. One over n squared versus one over two to the n. Um, one of these is a P series, one of these is a harmonic series. Not harmonic, what am I saying? Geometric series. This is a P series. This might not immediately look like anything, but if you're a little clever and you think that one is one raised to the nth power, you can see that this is a geometric series. So um, they look kind of similar. It's, you know, it's the, it's the difference between integrating x squared versus integrating e to the x. Um, make sure not to confuse them. And that's it for this section. Does anybody have last minute questions about the test tomorrow? Then I will see you for it right and early.